Welcome to the Master Builder Show, sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am your host, Jim Gibson, president of Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, a registered builder in the state of Texas, and I am a current member of the U.S. Green Building Council, Texas Association of Builders, National Association of Builders, and past president of Parker County Builders Association. Today's topics are, are going to be types of insulations and methods that we use to insulate your home properly. My guest today is Dale Cox. He's the general manager of Garland Insulating. And this show is designed to educate and answer any questions of listeners on residential design, construction, or anything dealing with building, remodeling, repairing, and maintaining a home in the state of Texas. So if you've got any questions, please give us a call, and insulation is very important. Uh, you can give us a call at 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. How are you this morning, Dale? I'm doing well, Jim. Thank you. We, uh, let's see, we're going to... Talk about insulation, and we're going to start with probably, I guess, the basic types of insulation this morning. Okay. What uh, What are we looking for, or what are we trying to do when we're insulating? Well, when you're trying to insulate a home, a new residential home, you want to make sure that the thermal uh, thermal envelope of the home, that uh, you've sealed it up properly, and uh, uh, also... Uh, after the after the sealing of it properly, you want to make sure that thermal envelope has the right R values. Okay, we're talking about when you're talking about sealing the thermal envelope. You're talking about uh, caulking, uh, sealing all penetrations from sealing the exterior. Sealing all penetrations from the and around doors and windows, where places where there could possibly be some some leakage and so forth. Yes, sir. Okay, everything we can do to stop the airflow that 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 helps you. I mean, uh, yeah. because if you're if you've got Say insulation in the wall, and you've got air blowing through it. You just negated the. You've, the, neg- the, you've negated the uh, the effects of the R value. That's correct. Okay, let's talk about uh, batting. I guess is what we're going to talk about. To start with. Okay. That's, that's probably the least expensive. It is the least expensive. It's uh, traditional fiberglass bats, and it comes in different R values. Uh, normally for the walls, it's an R13. In the ceilings, you can have R19, or R22, depending on the cavity space uh, that you have for your slope ceilings and different areas like that. Uh, and uh, traditional batting is, uh, as I said, typically fiberglass has been around for a long time. Do they have uh, high density type batting? Also? They do have high density bats. We don't see a lot of high density bats in the Dallas and Fort Worth area, but you are able in a two by four wall you can get an R fifteen, okay. and uh, and it is those are a little bit more expensive, uh, quite a bit more expensive actually than R thirteen bats. But it is you do get in two R values in that, and then in in a two by six wall or a two by six cavity you can go to an R twenty one. R21, that's using the, the dense bats. Yes, sir. Why, why, why isn't that common down here? Just because of cost? I think because of cost and uh, typically the codes have always been R13. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people look at it and say, well, if I'm, you know, if I'm going to insulate that, insulate that wall or insulate that cavity, then I'll just go with what the, what the code is. Well, they try not to spend any more money than they have to well, unless these, and they uh, are 15. Builders. You're exactly right. The, the high density bats are uh, quite a bit more expensive than the traditional fiberglass bats. With the, uh, all right, what do we look at? They've got face on the battings, non, uh, non-face battings. Uh. You have two types of bats, two types of traditional fiberglass bats, and uh, one is called face batting, as you said, it has craft paper on it, and uh, that's used as a vapor barrier. And then the other is unface bat, which it does not have any craft paper on it. What, and, what, what should we do, use down here? Really, they say anything south of the Red River now. They've come out and said that you don't need the vapor bear on the inside of the home, and so we've used unfaced bats. There are still a number of builders out there who, who request uh, the craft face uh, bat. With a craft face bat, you can go to a, a, an application called face stapling, where you actually bring it out to the front of the stud, and you staple it on the outside so it's nice and clean, and it's a, it's a clear vapor barrier. And some uh, builders who've been building for a long time are used to that type of application. Well, there's a reason for, for not doing that. So yeah. here, well, and, and I think building science is is uh, pushing, or building science is leading us. I guess I should say right. is leading us toward the unfaced bat here in, in Texas. Well, uh, you, you build regionally. You don't build uh, back uh, years ago. We built just like they did up north. Sure. Well, they found out it doesn't work in all areas. It's I not mean, the same. We have different needs here. Different needs. Well, yes, we're, we're here in North Texas. We're in a hot, humid climate, right? And so we have moisture problems. If you if you actually put a vapor barrier. Uh, on the interior of the walls, uh, we start collecting moisture in the bats okay. and and growing mold. Yeah. You know, uh, possibly if you don't have any uh, airflow through that to dry That's that thing true. out. I would say that, uh, and I've been at Garland Insulating for about twelve years, and I would say that building science is is moving. In those last twelve years, we tend to go towards more the end face bat. Well, uh, okay. On your if if you've got a pier and beam house, mm-hmm. what are you going to put on the floor? 
Either either way, you could go either, either, either one. Way on in, in that case, I, I kind of prefer the uh, craft face bat face with the paper facing up into the uh, to the floor. Okay, the yeah, yeah you want it to, yes, to, you want to stop it, kind of like uh, putting a right. house wrap on. Usually, when you're looking at a pier and beam house, when you're talking about uh, uh, trying to manage moisture, you can look at laying down a, a two mil or six mil poly on the ground. And then, and you can even use the unfaced bat. Then you're trying to. Uh, we we probably have very very few now building down here, pier and beam. Unless you're on your soil is our soil is so unstable or, or so steep that it's uh, not practical to right. to uh, build it up as far as dirt and all this other yeah. stuff. But I think 99, or probably 99 percent of all our houses down here are slab on grade. Yes, sir. The uh, we now. On your batting, mm-hmm. uh, it's important to install it correctly. Yes, I mean uh, because. Uh, being that it is, is the least expensive of all the types of insulation, uh, it, it still works great it does. Uh, if you install it correctly. But if you, I mean, if you go in there and just throw the stuff in, stuff it in there in between the studs, and not uh, actually seal around your electrical outlets and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, and I, I think uh, when you look at a, a traditional fiberglass bats in, in that application. What you want to make sure is when there's no compression, because any time that you compress a fiberglass bat or any insulation for that matter, any time you compress the bat, you're going to lose the R value. So you want to make sure that you don't have any compression in your bats. Well, I had a builder. Uh, I was uh, I, I look at construction everywhere I go, and I was out visiting my brother-in-law out in Tyler, and I met a builder out there, and, and I asked him, you know, how are you insulating the walls? Where were you using bats? And I said, well, what's your R value? Well, I've got an R19. I said, well, you've got... Uh, Two by six walls. He said, no, I got two by four <laughs> walls. I said, well, well, how'd you get an R19 in there? And he said, well, I just uh, took an R19 bat and stuffed Shoved it in it. there. Well, yeah, I, I, I said, well, you know, that kind of defeats your purpose. You're actually sure. decreasing it by probably 50% or, or greater by compressing it because that, that air pockets in there in your insulation are what uh, actually what help you give you exactly. the R value. When any any compression is is not good for the uh, for the bats, and so uh, you know that's one thing that we could do. And another thing, as far as the application of traditional fiberglass bats, is that uh, if you have wires running through, you need to be able to cut the bat and put the wire inside the bat. And then around electrical outlets that you just mentioned, you always want to make sure that you have a nice even cut around that electrical box, and then take that piece of insulation that you've cut out and put it behind it. Well, a lot of people don't do that, and especially on their uh, you know when when we're framing these houses up and you put in your plumbing, they put in a uh, like a, a one-piece bathtub, and invariably they'll leave out the insulation behind that bathtub so you have no insulation in there. Same way with the corners and uh, all that. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, any any place that you've got uh, between the interior and the exterior, you've got to have some type of insulation in there. Yeah, and one of the things we do, and you're talking about the, the bathtubs, Jim, one, one of the things that we do at our company is that we ask for a pre-bat phase, which will actually come out and we'll prep those areas. So any where a tub is going to go, uh, or even in some cases fireplaces as well, we'll go back and, and insulate that exterior wall before anything else. So that way they can come back and place the tub. You know it's there. You know it's a good install. That's a good idea. I mean, I, I know I call a, a bunch of people before we do a lot of insulation. And, uh, well, I have to call my sheet rockers on doing hot walls. It looks like we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.yourcircleofwealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. That's yourcircleofwealth.com. Alamo Appliance, 100 South Riverside Drive in Fort Worth, has been dedicated to serving your needs in kitchen appliances for over 35 years. They offer Gen Air, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and many others. Their experienced sales staff will help you make the right decisions at the right time. That's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Once again, that's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. 
Texas Tech is going bowling on New Year's Day. I'm Brian Jensen, voice of the Red Raiders. Join us January 1st as the top offense in the country, Texas Tech, takes on one of the best defenses in the land, the Virginia Cavaliers. Live from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, pregame at 11 Central, kickoff at noon. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's guest is Dale Cox, General Manager of Garland Insulating. And we've been talking about uh, insulating our bats and batting insulation. And we've about covered, I think, most of that on on the batting type. We're going to move on to blown-in cellulose. And uh, what is blown-in cellulose? Well, the cellulose product itself is a recycled newspaper, so it's a green product. And uh, it's been treated with uh, uh, borates, and so it's where the fire retardancy comes from. And it is a, uh, it's a great product. It actually has glue on each one of the fibers, and it's installed with a, a light mist installed with water, so it's blown in wet, and it fills up the cavity. It's a very good product. Well, it also, is, uh, the borate acts as an insect repellent also. It, it does. Oh. It has, it's a, yes, and it's also a natural fungicide. You talked about mold earlier. Right. And so it does, uh, actually can, can help against mold. And you're not talking that, about that much more in cost. Uh, as not far that as... much more in cost in most cases. Uh, the the thing that I really like about any wall spray, but specifically the, the cellulose, is the fact that when we talked about compression earlier, and some of the things that we talked about that you have to do, you have to take extra step with bats to make sure that it is a, a good install, Jim, is that with a, a wall spray, you're going to get that good install. There's not going to be any compression. It's going to go around the wire. It's going to go around the pipes. It's going to go behind the electrical boxes, all those hard-to-reach places. And uh, we didn't talk about irregular framing, but if it's not 16-inch on center, if it's 12 inches or it's a different uh, cavity, it's still going to fill that cavity up completely. So the any wall spray and the cellulose wall spray does a great job for air infiltration. Well, I know y'all do a, what they call a coon wrap where you come in and use an elastic uh, or, or some type of spray and foam and seal all the penetrations all. Uh, yeah. We, that's an energy seal package, and, and uh, most companies will be doing that in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but it's an energy seal package. We'll come in at the very first uh, stage of the home, and we do seal up all the penetrations. Then we'll come back and we do the, the cocoon wall spray and, and with the cellulose. It just makes for a very tight home. Oh, it, 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 I, I love the product. I've, I use it quite a bit. I think I've, I've used it on probably eight or ten houses. And yeah. it's, it's, I think it's a great product. You know, one of the things you said you were talking about, that our value for, for bad is an R13 with a cellulose wall spray and a two before cavity, it's about a 13.4. And so it's not that much, it's not gr- that great of a jump for our value, but what is, uh, the, the big jump is when you get to the air infiltration of that. Yeah, because you're sealing around, I mean, it's blowing in, and, and it's actually blowing in behind the boxes, so you don't really have to worry about people stuffing the extra insulation behind it. And, and I like to think that we do a good job with bats as well, but it, there are times where you can get into different situations where it's very difficult to cut that bat exact. Well, true. And so you look at, at some gaps and some voids, and, and uh, that's really... A good install means that there's very few gaps and voids, if, if any. Well, and I know a bunch of the houses we build, they may have uh, two or three gang boxes or two or three electrical boxes, right, uh, for, for lighting because sure. they'll have the, uh, all sorts of lighting pictures, and, and most of them going in with three-way type switches, and that's really hard to cut around if you've yeah. got, like, two gang boxes or whatever sitting there on the wall. And uh, with that blown-in cellulose, you just blow it. Yeah, with the cellulose, it doesn't matter. That's exactly right. It fills up all of that. If you all got any questions on uh, insulating, uh, give Dale and I a call at 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. And uh, I, normally when I first started the show, I was telling everybody how to choose a builder and all this other stuff. If you all go to uh, www.masterbuildershow.com and click on TRCC, you can check out your builders there. Uh, that is important. They are registered builders in the state of Texas. And this is one way that you can easily check and, and see if they are before you hire them. Uh, there's pretty stiff fines if they're not, and you're not really uh, guaranteed a warranty if they're not a registered builder. Uh, they can skip out and go anywhere. And this way uh, they're registered and your, their homes are registered. Uh, what else are we going to talk about on the, on the uh, 
blown in cellulose. Now, we're, we're when they blow it in the attic, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about, uh, I've always heard, they say, well, how many inches is it uh, to give it to R value? I've always heard they have a chart that tells you how much to blow in or how many bags to blow in, uh, not just because I've heard of air fluffing. Uh, you, yeah. you know, no, those, and those things do take place. It is uh, every blowing material, whether it's cellulose, fiberglass, uh, rock wool. We don't deal with rock wool, but rock wool. They all have what's called a blowing chart. And on that chart, it's going to state that certain R values are, are going in certain square footages are going to require this number of bags or the, or the final this final uh, depth, the, the number of inches that you're going to. Well, for example, for uh, green fiber cellulose, which is what we use, uh, you're looking at about 8.1 inches for an R30 and a little over 10 inches for an R38. And, uh, Jim, what we do is at the uh, seal stage of our homes, we also stop and we put a depth marker or an attic ruler. We'll go ahead and put that into the uh, to the attics, to the joists there, so that once our, our uh, the last phase, when we come back in to blow the attic of a home, uh, our installers can actually see a ruler and they know where to blow uh, blow that up to. And it's very important that you do get the right uh, you know the right, right depth, depth. because if you if you're less than eight inches, then obviously you're not going to have an R30, and, and the house is not going to perform as well. Well, they're not really look. Well, they're looking at it to make sure they've got an even coat and, and a minimum of that. But they're still uh, you should still go by the number of bags and not yeah. not the depth. Because the number of bags are important. In fact, what we do it in every home that we do is that after we insulate an attic, we'll put an attic card up in the uh, up in the attic, and we'll staple it usually to uh, somewhere around the, uh, right, the uh, attic access. Yes, sir. And uh, what I'll do is we'll say this is the the R value that we blew, and these are the number of bags that we used. And that's very important for homeowners to see as well. Is – now, what's what? Let's go on to. We're using blown in. Right. Uh, we're blown in cellulose. Uh, a lot of times, I use blown in fiberglass up mm-hmm. in up in my uh, attics and in your attic? and blow that in on top of uh, we usually foam the the sheetrock below it. Right. And if we're if you're using blown in insulation, blow up blown in insulation up that. Uh, the density, it, the, dent, the I know the cellulose appears to be more dense. It is. And uh, the, so you're actually using air content. I mean, the air pockets in the or insulating? Yeah, that's true. You know, you can achieve R values uh, with fiberglass or cellulose. You can achieve any R value, R38, R30. It just depends on the – for example, uh, if we're using uh, – we use uh, certainty products in our attics as well as uh, uh, for fiberglass, certainty products for our, in our attics, and also Owens Corning uh, products in our attics. And those are somewhere between 13 and 14 inches for an R30. So it takes a little bit more of that material. It's a little uh, – there's more depth to that. But the important part is, is that what that chart says and, and make sure that you, re, you achieve the right depth value. Okay, it looks like we've got to take another break now. We'll be right back here in a few minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www. YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. That's YourCircleOfWealth.com. The Bank of Weatherford, local folks you know and trust. We are proud of our community and our customers. Whether you need a checking account, personal or business loan, auto loan, interim construction loan, or mortgage loan, we can help. You may visit us at 901 Santa Fe Drive in Weatherford, or you may give us a call at 817-596-9998. You may also visit us on the web at www.thebankofweatherford.com. The Bank of Weatherford, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Are you ready for some football? 
Every touchdown, every milestone, for Tony Romo. every victory Dallas leads the unbeaten Colts. is heard right here all season on this Dallas Cowboys radio network station. Brad Sham here inviting you to join me for this season's second round of Cowboys Eagles, 315 Central Sunday afternoon. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am your host, Jim Gibson. My guest today is Dale Cox, and we are talking about insulation and insulation methods, I guess, to uh, to properly insulate your house. And we've talked about the batting. We we're talking about blown-in cellulose. You've also got some blown-in fiberglass products that act like cellulose. Yeah, don't you? We, we do, Jim. And, you know, and, the, and the important thing is that it, right now is to address air infiltration. We're talking about a new home. How do you address air infiltration? I mean, making the home, making the home tighter. And uh, uh, we use a cellulose wall spray. We also have a fiberglass wall spray. Uh, it's uh, We use spider from uh, John's Manville. And uh, it is a, it's another loose fill blow into the walls. And, again, you get the same air infiltration properties, a little higher R value. But, it, again, it just goes back to filling up that cavity. But there's a number of items out there. There's a rock wool wall spray. We don't, we don't use rock wool, but uh, some companies will. Uh, we also do the foam products. I'm sure you're familiar with the open cell oh, foam yeah. and closed cell foam. Use a lot of open cell, a lot yeah. of closed cell. When we started out, uh, the closed cell was, was fairly reasonable at one time. I mean, it was the most expensive of all of them, but still it, it, it hinged on oil prices because it is a petroleum product, and it adds a rigid value to it. Uh, but uh, it's gotten to where it's, it's pretty well out of out range when, as far as uh, buying it. Uh, and if you're if you're looking to insulate a new home and you want to talk about stratus as far as how the pricing goes, I think the the least expensive would start off at uh, the traditional fiberglass batch as you mentioned, and then uh, for for us it would be uh, to go to a cellulose wall spray, then it would be a, a fiberglass wall spray, and then the foam. But the foam is the most expensive. The, the the products alone, the the material that you have to buy, very expensive. Well, yeah, and the application is a little bit uh, the equipment that you're using on the application. That's exactly is, right. It, it needs to be a trained crew, a crew that's certified, a, tra- a crew that's gone through a number of, uh, a lot of training to make sure that, the, because they are producing, they're on the job. Well, yeah, and, and that if, if you're spraying, overspraying and all that other stuff, the mess it causes, it's real hard to clean up. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of issues. I wish I said I didn't know personally about that, but we do. Yeah. yeah. If you've got any questions on insulation or insulating your home and, or, and what you need to do, uh, give us a call at 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. Okay, we're uh, on the fiberglass now. It it blows in typically the same as as the blown in cellulose. It is typically the same. It, it has a little higher glue content. Actually, when we when we spray in the cellulose, uh, it's sprayed in with the water, and uh, and the the glue is actually on the product. It's reversed in that with the fiberglass. We actually spray it in with a glue. It's a water bla- uh, water based glue, and it's sprayed in. So that's how it sticks into the the cavity. Okay, and you're, we're still it's sealing it off, and, and we're not really. We were talking about the earlier bats. We were talking about uh, paper uh, retarders, I guess, or ray, right paper barriers, paper yes, barriers. Sir. And really, here in Texas, in North Texas, where we live, we do not want to put any paper barriers on the interior walls. Uh, my wife likes a lot of uh, wallpaper at times. Right. Right? They make the vinyl wallpaper. Vinyl wallpaper. And uh, I'm going, I, I cringe when she thinks about doing it on an exterior wall because that, that's actually putting a vapor retarder, vapor barrier right there on that exterior wall, and you've got a chance of moisture building up behind it. Uh, wallpaper is good, and you can use it as long as it's breathable on an, on an exterior wall. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't. Do you know anything about the new uh, paints that they're coming out with as far as the insulating paint? Insulating paint. You talk about a radiant barrier paint. Well, they've got a they've got a new paint that's got ceramic in it, and uh, it was developed by NASA. And uh, I was reading about it and doing the research for the show that uh, they they've got it out right now, and it, it's a, it's a mix, and it it has little ceramic beads in it, 
And what it does, it, it has an air gap. Well, if you don't know about that, we won't talk about that. <laughs> but uh, that's something that, that if y'all are interested on the inter- uh, go on the internet and just look at the, uh, the insulating paints that they're coming up with. There's all sorts of new products that are coming out there. They're not really affordable yet. I mean, but uh, they are. They will be coming down in price over the long run. Well, <clears throat> one of the paints that we do have, it, it, there's a, a radiant barrier, is becoming. A <clears throat> Becoming more of a, a product, I guess, that, that people are looking at. And you could do this on existing homes as well as new uh, new construction. But to stop that radiant heat coming in from, uh, from the outside and into the attic, uh, and we actually have a, a radiant barrier paint. It's called Heat Block 75 is what we use. But uh, it'll actually reflect the UV rays. I know in all of our new construction, we use a radiant barrier to put up there. And uh, on an existing home, you don't really have that option. So it's best if you come back in. I know there's a bunch of companies out there that are there's doing it now. There's a lot of different radiant but, barriers. But that you y'all are see. actually doing it uh, your, we, yourselves we do, now? <clears throat> we do that, and then we can uh, – you know, it has become a, a little bit of a bigger market force in the last year and a half in existing homes. Well, it, it's it's a big deal, and people don't realize that that putting that radiant barrier, but you can cut your attic temperature ten, twenty, sometimes thirty degrees, 30 degrees and, exactly. and that helps your cooling system operate more efficiently and cuts back on your electric bill. And really, that's one of your cheapest options you could probably do. Uh, on an existing home, uh, besides blowing in more insulation, is it, cutting the heat back in your attic where your uh, air conditioning yeah. heating systems are. And in an existing home, there's only so many things that you can do because everything's everything's boarded up, everything's sheetrocked, and so there, it doesn't leave you a lot of options. But the attic, and, and addressing the attic, whether it be insulation or radiant barrier, those are some of the ways that you can make a difference. Okay, say I've bought a house, and, and, and how do I know whether I have enough insulation in the attic? Is there any way that... Uh, just other than calling y'all and saying, come out and tell me? You can call us and we'll go out and tell you. Uh, but one of the things, I mean, you simply going up and taking a look at it. And most of the times the joists are going to be two by, uh, two by sixes. They're going to be six inches. If you can see the tops of those joists, you have less than six inches, then you need insulation. Well, it, and it, it really, that's, it's really one of the cheapest things you can do to, to help you out in the long run as far as uh, your, your heating and cooling bills. Exactly. Existing homes, if you if you go back and, and you add insulation to it, of course, every every situation is different, but you may be able to cut your heating and cooling costs up to 20, 25%. We've got a couple of Home Depot gift certificates to give away today, and our, our first trivia question today is going to be, what is the recommended R value that we're supposed to have? And I believe it's code that we should have in our walls here in the North Texas area. What is the recommended R value uh, here in North Texas for the wall cavity? Uh, that's recommended here. Uh, we've got, um, but okay, we're talking how, I guess, how, how many other types of insulation are there? As far as we've got, uh, we talked about the fiberglass baths, we talked mm-hmm. about the cellulose, we talked about the blown in fiberglass. Uh, what, well, one now, of the things that we haven't talked about, I guess, would be the foam product in, in depth. <clears throat> I think, um, the, the foam product was really starting to, I think it's had less than 1%. Over the years, it's had less than 1% of the homes built in America have used foam, and, and that's probably up to about 4 or 5% now. Well, they're going with uncon- or conditioned attics now. Yeah. Where the, I mean, you're actually not having any insulation on the floor in. of the yeah, yeah. the floor of the ceiling and and a lot of people are going or looking into that uh, building science is saying that that's a that's a, to go back into put the attic space a, a part of the uh, condition space. Hello, caller. We welcome you live on the Master Builder Show. You got an answer? R13. R13. What is your name, sir? You're correct. Troy Dickey. Charlie Dickey? No, Troy. Troy. Troy yeah. Dickey. All right. You, uh, you know where the station is? Sir? Do you know where the radio station is? Yes, sir. All right. We've got a Home Depot gift certificate to give you. Come on out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, Okay, we're going to start out with the cheaper of the two phones, which is going to be your open cell phone, which, right. is, uh, like I said, the, the closed cell phone has gotten pretty, or just about nobody. Very pricey. Well, That's it's right. very pricey, and uh, the open cell phone, what what kind of R value are we looking at? Well, when you start talking about open cell phone, you start talking about a phone in a house, really uh, the, the R value is uh, of least importance at that time because what they sell on is the, uh, the, what they say it'll produce is, is the air infiltration package. A two by four wall, you'll get less than an R13 uh, with an open cell phone. And the, but the reason is, and what we say, well, it's 13, as the, the caller just said, well, wait, it's R13 is code, but because of the air infiltration properties of it, then it can pass code. 
Well, it's, yeah, because you're, you're stopping all the air blowing through it. Exactly. You're it like an ice chest. It's, it's, that's the way we talk about it, too. It's, it's creating your own ice chest. Well, they're, they're, okay, and, and when, you're, when you're foaming a house, uh, you not only have to worry about insulating it and foaming it. When you're sealing it up that tight, you're going to have to talk about some type of air exchange. Air exchange, unit. exactly. That's very, very important. Very too. important because yeah. if you're sealing that envelope that tight, then there's no way for the moisture to get out. And right. so you've got to control all your air coming in and going out, so you've got to – uh, design for that. Yeah. Can't just uh, can't just go in and take an existing house and foam it and yeah. seal it. And Jim, I think that's a great point. I, I think that uh, uh, homeowners who are looking to build a home and they want to to look at a foam product, that needs to be a discussion that they have with their architect. I mean, from the very start before the plans are even drawn, to go back through and say, what are some of the steps that we need to take with this? Yeah, because there, there's all sorts. Of, uh, building sciences is is. is fascinating now with all the things they've got coming out and there are certain ways that you have to do stuff and you can't just do any one of them and 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 have good results and sometimes you can you can have bad results and yeah. such as moisture and and mold problems if you don't sure. uh, i mean they say foam's good and it is probably one of the better insulations out there but if you don't actually uh, plan for it and plan ahead uh as far as doing your outside air uh, exchange units and, and everything that you need to do, then, then actually you're going to put in more problems than, than it's worth. And there's also differences that have to be uh, considered for your HVAC because sometimes you need to downsize the unit right? so you don't have it continually uh, coming on. And so yeah, it's a, it's more looking at the home as a system at that point. Well, instead you of building like an product. engine. It's exactly right. Yeah. Instead of just looking at pieces and parts, you have to look at it as a system and how do they all work together. Yeah, if, if you don't uh, – if you don't downsize your air conditioning system, your insulation so well uh, that the HVAC system does what they call a short cycle. And when it short cycles, that means it runs a uh, very short time, comes in, cools off your house. But we have dehumidifiers in our HVAC systems, and it's supposed to run long enough to take the moisture, moisture out, out of the that's air. That's exactly right. And uh, I, I know we, we save a lot of money doing the – well, it costs you more up front to use the foam. But uh, you're talking about decreasing your your heating and cooling uh, capacity. Si- I mean, size. I guess uh, your units. Because a lot of times on these big houses, we can go 800 and sometimes a thousand square foot per ton on the cooling system. Right. And typical is 500, I guess. Right. Well, yeah. uh, that was the old rule of thumb. Actually, now they use a, a, a heat load calculations right. to uh, to figure the size of the unit. But uh, there again, if, if it's insulated that well, it's like a light. Uh, we, we tell them that well, you can heat it with a candle and cool it with an ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got uh, we've got another Home Depot gift certificate to give away today, and our next question is going to give me uh, give me one way heat migrates. Uh, give me one way heat migrates, and there, there are three different methods we're looking uh, for. And there's just uh, all you got to do is be able to name one up to win a $25 gift certificate to Home Depot. You can reach us at 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. On your uh, foam insulation, okay, we were talking about open cell. Open cell is, is, is what, 3.5 per, per inch? I think it's yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Right then, yeah, right at and, it, and it and it's more like a sponge rather than a. It than does it. It feels <clears throat> quite a bit like a, a sponge or like a, a these therapeutic mattresses, I guess. That's kind of what it looks like. It kind of feels like. <laughs> oh, like the memory mattress. The memory mattress, right? They are. It is a great great way to insulate the house, and I, and I know on our bended, unbended attics right now, we're using a lot of that up there to have conditioned space upstairs, and mm-hmm. we're actually spray, spraying it on the. Uh, rafters themselves are on the underside of the decking or the roof and making the attic conditioned space. And uh, all of them that I've been in, it uh, looks like we've got another caller. Welcome. You're live on QXFM. you got an answer for us. Live on the Master Builder Show. Hello, caller. Hi, yes. I wanted to answer that question. All right, sir. What is the answer? Uh, it, well, isn't it radiation or conduction? Uh, yeah, there's radiation, conduction, and, and you know convection. the third and convection, correct. What is your name, sir? My name is uh, Joe. Joe, you know where uh-huh. the ra- you know where the radio station is. Uh, actually, I don't. Actually, you don't. We're at sixteen twelve South Main in Weatherford. Where are you located? In Mineral Wells. In Mineral Wells. I tell you yes, what, I, I'm going to put you on hold here, and Ace is going to take your address, and, and I'll mail it to you. I'll I appreciate it. Call. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, the three three ways to migrate heat 
He sounded like he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, conduction, <laughs> convection, and radiation. Uh, you want to break down those three or, or don't want to break those down? Well, conduction conduction is, is I guess the simple way to put it is if you've ever boiled water and um, you start, you, you grab a metal spoon, stick in that water and leave it in there for a little bit, well, the handle's going to eventually heat up so hot you can't even touch it. That, that's conduction because that metal conducts and it comes all the way up. Uh, radiation, uh, one simple way to explain that is, uh, turn the burner on your stove and stick your hand on it. That heat that's coming up is, is, is radiating off of the burner. And so that's, that's radiation. And convection is, uh, is what we try to block when we're putting in the, the, uh, like the tie back, house back, the, the infiltration. So heat, heat moving through air. Heat moving through air. And that's one of the, the great reasons you and I were talking off air about uh, backing your open walls. And, and when you talk about the insulation and insulating a, a new home or even existing home, you know, this is one of the way that you can look at it as well. If you have a wall that's open to an attic, if uh, <clears throat> if there's no backing on, on that wall, I guess it should be sheetrock, then insulation, and then there should be some backing on there, then you're going to get convective heat. It's going to fly through that, that bat and go straight into that uh, uh, room. Right. We, uh, we I've had a bunch of... Uh, Upstairs rooms that we call them bonus rooms. Now we're building yes. above garage, and if you don't go in and we spray the back of those those sheet rocked walls with mm-hmm. either blown in cellulose or foam, and then I'll normally come in and put a, a polystyrene or polyisocyanate uh, type, uh, uh, I guess sheathing product right over back, there, right? some type of product there that reflects the heat back into the attic, and I, yeah. I, I'd like to have it boiled back so it, so it does reflect the heat back in the attic. When, and I think it's very important in that part. When you talk about convective heat, uh, you know, it's very important in that part to have an air barrier on that side. And, and, and you know, and insulation for insulation to work properly, it needs to be uh, it needs to be touched on all six sides. And, and once you do that, if you back those open walls and you stop that convective heat coming into the home, then that then that house is going to perform better, be more comfortable. All right, we've got to take another break here. We'll be back in a few minutes. Home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County. Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank of Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member, FDIC, and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G-I-B-S-O-N. That's yourcircleofwealth.com. Alamo Electrical Contracting Services, 9500 Camp Bowie West, Fort Worth, Texas, 817-249-4964. Offering residential and commercial electrical services in Parker, Palo Pinto, Wise, Hood, Johnson, Erath, and Tarrant Counties. That's Alamo Electrical Contracting Services, 9500 Camp Bowie West, Fort Worth, Texas, 817-249-4964. This is Lou Manfredini. My home improvement minutes are funded by Ace Hardware, ITW brand fasteners, and April Air automatic humidifiers. You know, it's not too late to do some fall pruning on your bushes and trees. The trick is not to prune too much. I like to hand prune as I feel it gives the plants a more natural look. Now, if you have a hedge that you use for privacy, then a mechanical cutting shear may make quick work of that. But remember, fall pruning leads to healthier, thicker plants in the spring. More information at MyNewsPod.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. 
Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I'm your host, Jim Gibson. My guest today is Dale Cox, the general manager for Garland Insulating. We're talking about all types of insulation. We started talking about batting. We talked about the uh, blown-in cellulose. And we've talked about the blown-in fiberglass. And we're talking about the open cell phone. And then we've talked a little about the... Uh, the closed cell phone? Well, we, no, we haven't talked about the closed cell phone yet. What, okay, when we're talking phones, there's open cell, uh, which is your polyacinine, mm-hmm. and then uh, you're talking closed cell, which is polyurethane, uh, basically. And uh, the the two, the difference in the two is one of them, our value is about R7 per inch, which is the closed cell. Uh, you got anything to throw in there? No, it it is one. And I think you mentioned earlier too, Jim, is that the uh, closed cell does provide some structural strength to a to a uh, uh, house to a, to a structure. Well, what they do when they blow that stuff in there, they, it's it's actually a structural foam. Uh, most of your refrigerator uh, trailers that mm-hmm. run down the road here that are uh, freezer type, they're hauling fish in or whatever, they've got that foam in it, and it increases racking strength about two hundred times. Uh, you can take uh, two inches or two, they're about two inches, and blow in an attic, and uh, you can take a guy like you, run up and down on it, and it like it's like it's all floored in. And uh, I think we've got we when we lost Joe there when he answered that last question on right. the conduction and all that stuff. I think he fell off the line before they got his name and address. If he'll call back in at eight seven seven three four one eight nine five zero, we'll get that gift certificate to him. And like I said, I think he fell off the line is what they're telling me. So if Joe from Mineral Wells can call us at 877-341-8950 to claim that gift certificate, I uh, would appreciate it. Okay. The, the rigid foam, uh, I used to use it in oh quite a few houses. And like I said, the price has gone up uh, due to the price of oil. You know, oil is up to about 100 bucks a barrel now. And uh, so consequently, the foam prices are up. And it... Uh, I've got a got a caller. It looks like coming okay. in here. Welcome, welcome caller. You're live on the Master Builder Show. You have a question for us? Yes, I do. I own a rent property that's an older home that's been divided into a duplex. Yes, ma'am. And the wall that's been divided is not, of course, an interior wall was not insulated. Right. Is, is there any way to insulate that without tearing the whole thing out? Yeah, uh, there is. Uh, Dale, you want to answer that? Yeah. Well, this is an interior wall, is that correct? Yes, sir. It runs the whole length yeah. of the house. And, and you'd want to insulate that for sound purposes. Right. And there's an application that's very simple. One is called drill and fill. And what needs to be done and what will be done is, is that a company will come out and they will actually drill about a three-inch hole into the uh, cavities there, and they will fill that up, usually with a cellulose product or, or even fiberglass, either one. But what it will do is it will dampen the sound between the two. I'm assuming that uh, are there people living in it right now? Right. And they could probably hear each other on either side. <laughs> well, it has wood floors and it echoes like oh, a barn. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, and the thing to do is to go back in to fill it with with an insulation because of the, the we in uh, Garland Insulating Gym. What we do is we use a, a green fiber cellulose for that product as well because of the STC rating, which is Sound Transmission Coefficient, right. and it's a little higher than fiberglass. But you can fill it with a product, and it'll it'll deaden that sound between the two uh, two units. Do you understand what he's telling you? Yes, I do. Sir. Okay, yeah, it. Uh, uh, if, if the wall is fire blocked, you may have to drill more than one hole at the top. But uh, okay. otherwise, they can just drill a hole at the top, that three inch hole, stick the hose in there, and fill her up. Okay. And usually, remember that usually there'll be two holes per cavity, meaning that if it's a if it's a sixteen foot wall, there may be ten ten different cavities in there, and so we'll put one at the top and one at the bottom, and make sure that it's filled up. Well, it's more like a twenty or thirty foot fill wall. There'll be a number of holes, okay. <laughs> but you'll there, need to get patched. There'll be there'll be a uh, same number of holes, well, I guess twice as many holes okay, as yes. there is studs. Right. Okay, there, this is not something they could do then from the attic space. No, unfortunately, we really can't. Uh, it's uh, There's really no way to go back and, and to drill through that top plate. Uh, okay. Jim, I don't think it's safe to no, do that you, as well. No, you'd be uh, uh, harming the structure yeah. if you did okay. that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to bore that many holes across the top plate. Yeah. And I'm have sorry the to say that down. the answer is that we would, we'd have to put holes into the sheetrock. But, okay. you know, uh, that, that really is... is about the only way you can do it, and then you can get a sheetrock repair company to come back in and plug all those holes. And, and uh, they're only going to have to drill them on one side, so so you're going to have to talk to whoever is in one side of your apartment okay. there, and uh, they won't have to drill them in both sides. So okay. Well, one side actually has the paneling that was put up when they divided it. It was divided before I bought it, and 
the noise transmission has become more of a problem as more people get louder with all these TVs and. You got and, the big screen TV up there. Oh yeah. <laughs> screaming when the Cowboys play, I guess. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, anything else we can do for you? Is this something that this? man's company does yes ma'am why don't you give them contact number there I, I can give you contact number let me go ahead and give you our this is our metro number uh garland insulin we have four different offices uh one closest to us now is the one in north richland hills but it, we have a metro number it's 214-341-0254 okay and the company name again it's garland insulin garland g-a-r-l-a-n-d yes ma'am. okay garland insulating Okay. Uh, I right. appreciate your answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, if anybody else has any question on insulating, now's the time to call us. Uh, you know, Jim, that was one thing. She brought up a very good point that we didn't discuss earlier, and that is that the insulating of the home, it does have some sound issues. I mean, there, there it true. can be uh, attributed to the insulation because insulation is not only for thermal properties, but it also dampens sound. Correct. And that's one thing I've found out when uh, we're using closed, uh, closed cell foam up in an attic. If you get uh, some kind of leak up there or something like that, it, it, it uh, actually echoes makes that whole whole attic a speaker and, yeah. and you can get up there and, and drop something or tap on it and you'll hear it throughout the house because it is uh like i said it's it's rigid foam right. it's like tapping on a board so normally we lose fill on top of that so, right. to, and, to try to deaden it to deaden it yes and that's one of the good things about uh you know all products have an stc rating and the higher the stc rating then the better it's going to dampen that sound stc now explain stc sound to transmission them. coefficient okay sound and transmission it, coefficient it, it, it gets somewhat difficult because there are different uh it's either is it in a two by four wall what type of uh a two by six wall, two by four wall. Is, are the studs staggered? Uh, what type of uh, uh, sheetrock are you using? So there's a lot of different factors that go into that. But typically, what we found is is if you go to a blown in product like we were dis- discussing before, that that home will actually be quieter than it is uh, you know than traditional fiberglass bats. And so the uh, like a cellulose product has a great SDC rating and it's a lot higher uh, than fiberglass, and so it makes for a much quieter home. Okay, well, it looks like we've got to take another break here. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G-I-B-S-O-N. That's yourcircleofwealth.com. Henson Lumber, Crescent, Texas, 817-396-4321. www.hensonlumber.com. Henson Lumber, serving our community since 1973. Both lumber and millwork products. Full-time estimator gives customers defined and accurate materials estimates. The millwork department has windows, doors, trim, and hardware. www.hensonlumber.com. Henson Lumber, Crescent, Texas, 817-396-4321. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guest today is Dale Cox. Dale, tell us a little bit about your company. You're with Garland, Garland Insulating. Right. At Garland Insulating, we've been around for just about 60 years. 
And uh, we have uh, we have uh, offices in uh, Dallas and Fort Worth, as I mentioned, North Richland Hills, and uh, also Austin and Houston. And uh, we provide different thermal products. We, some of the products that we've talked about today, we, we provide bats, uh, cellulose wall spray, uh, John's Manville spider wall spray, which is the fiberglass wall spray. We also do what's called a blown-in blanket. We didn't get to that today, but it's a different type of insulation uh, as well for the exterior walls. And... Um, and then we use the foam as well. We use Demolec foam in, in, in a number of homes. And uh, so, like I said, we've been around for about 60 years, and it's family-owned and operated. And uh, we have a website. It's garlandinsulating.com, www.garlandinsulating.com. And, Jim, on that website, you can go there, take a look. at. The, it has some building science on it, a number of products that we use, and, and some links to different things links to different manufacturers so you can go back and kind of people can pick and choose and learn more about the products that we uh, install. What is your phone number again? Our phone number, it's Metro 214-341-0254. Okay. The, uh, my wife uh, wanted me to answer a question for her up here, and she said, well, what if, what if people really can't afford to add insulation at this time, and they're in a house that's drafty and uh uh, what can they do uh, economically to actually help them out on their heating and cooling bill? And, and what I, uh, the main thing that you ne- they need to do is seal the air in, fill, uh, in uh, penetrations. I mean, if they can get around the window and they, they feel the air coming through, caulk is relatively in, inexpensive. If they can get out there and caulk around those windows and uh, seal them uh, to keep that air from flowing through, that, that's number one thing. I've seen people staple up uh, plastic over mm-hmm. their windows. Uh, you can buy the vinyl fairly inexpensive, and, and like I said, if you, you can if you can stop that air blowing through there, you can uh, increase your R value yeah. quite a bit, and and it will help you out tremendously. And if it does really get down in, in the freezings and, and all that stuff, and you still got problems with the the radiation, I guess the, uh, the temperature through the through the glass itself, or that would be conduction. <laughs> but I, well, I guess it would be radiation through there. Uh, you can also, uh, over your curtains, hang up some some type of heavier type drapes uh, or even hang up a quilt or uh, something just to stop that. And, that. and that's one thing that you can do if you can't afford to buy the insulation and stuff and, and increase the amount. The uh, That's, I guess, the only answer is to it is stop the airflow and, 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 and blanket it somehow. Get some yeah. You know, Jim, I think some of the studies that have been done, they said that you can take an R19 bat, which is about six and a quarter inches. You take an R19 bat, and if air blows through that, it blows through that bat, just like you were talking about stopping the air, that that bat actually, the R value, the actual R value, that's going to be about an R6. So it right. loses that much R value when uh, air blows through it. Well, I've seen these demonstrations of the ping pong balls. Right. That, that they have these tubes, and they'll have a heat lamp below the, you know, with a the fan there. And they'll have batting, and then they'll have blown-in cellulose, and they'll have some type of foam product. And you go to the one with the uh, batting, and the ping-pong wall is almost at the top of the tube, and the heat difference is is minimal. I mean, uh, it might be 100 degrees down to where the heat lamp is, and above that it might be 99. It won't help enough because you've got the, the air blowing through it. Mm-hmm. Now, when you come over to the cellulose, it, it's going to make a little bit different than your ping-pong ball, ball is probably floating about halfway or so. And uh, your air temperature difference is going to be probably five or six, six degrees, or maybe ten degrees. Mm-hmm. And then you come over to the foam, ping pong ball sitting, sitting on top of the foam has right. no 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 movement at all. No air and, movement at all. And people, that's one thing you want to control is is your your air infiltration. And if you can control that, then you pretty well uh, uh, will. Cut your bills in half as far as your heating and cooling bill. If you've got wind blowing through there, you have no R value at all. And yeah. you were saying that R19 is cut in half? Well, less than, uh, more than half is down to about an R6. R6. Yeah. So R19 to an R6 is, is a big difference. And, and like I said, if, if you're, if you're trying to insulate, uh, your walls and stuff and do it yourself, do like Dale said, you don't stuff that insulation in there because that, that also decreases the amount of insulation or R value. Uh, just by stuffing it full, you want you want those air pockets in there, and uh, if you've got a problem with with uh, putting them putting it in there. Uh, you want to make sure if you've got an air barrier on there, you want to make sure it's uh, to the outside, and not mounted, not stapled on the inside. Right. Uh, just because of our moisture problems. 
Right. You stay away from the vapor bears. As you've already mentioned a couple of times, anytime you have two vapor bears on either side of the wall, you're going to trap moisture. Right. You want and to stay away from trapping moisture inside the wall. Yeah, 90% of our houses out here that we build, well, all the houses we build, we put a house wrap on. We, right. We, uh, we use a product called Tyvek. Yeah, or, we, we install Tyvek as well, and I love oh, the Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. Well, all right. That That's good to know because I didn't know you were in the yeah. Tyvek process too. Well, the, the Tyvek is great for air infiltration but also great for moisture management. And stopping bulk moisture getting into the walls, and it's not a vapor barrier. Right. Yeah, because yeah, it does breathe. It does breathe. I think it has a permitting of about 54, 57. Right. So, that, so. Uh, we use a lot of Tyvek, and, and we put that behind just about all our our, yeah. base, our sheathings or whatever, our bricks or rock, and uh, provide a drain plane. Yeah. I, I think now there's so many different choices that you can, uh, you can make. You can make so many different choices uh, on how you want to insulate a house. Do you want to use a house wrap? There are a number of ways that really you – know, People who are going to build a new home need to sit down and really look at those things and say, what, what exactly do we want? Because it is about choices. Whether it is traditional fiberglass batch, you go to any kind of wall spray. Using house wrap, there's a number of ways to cut your heating and cooling costs for the lifetime of that home. Yeah, and it just depends on how much uh, how much you want to spend and, and your, I guess your your payback, I guess, over the, and how long it takes. to get. But I know most of my customers that put in the phone, of course, we put them in when it was a little cheaper. But uh, it looks like we've got to wrap it up, wrap up the show today. Okay. And we'll come back and we'll see you next Tuesday.